the most shameless women on paternity court. Miss yeah. Miller, that's a lot of nerve considering the alternative is somebody that don't want nothing to do with you or your child. I'm sorry. I'm a single mother with nobody that loves me or my child. What you cheering for? Be I, every time. Every time. So all you, you do down is... me, but you had sex with me too, so I mean, yeah. you love me, right? Yeah. I do is what I do. I'm not, I love, I love me. You understand me? Mr. McCormick has come to paternity court today because the love of his life has turned out to be a serial cheater. You thought you found the perfect woman Woman, until you discovered the love of your life with just a serial cheater on a rampage. You say Miss Ball is a shameless, adulterous, and there is no way you are her son Gavin's father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Cutting right to the chase, the reality TV judge jumped right into the part about Miss Ball being shameless and adulterous. Found text messages. Uh, I've seen her getting in strange vehicles, seen videos. What haven't I found? Like, you know, ha there's no way that I could be this child's father. I'm starting to become numb to all this. Though Jessica Ball agreed to the cheating part, she was persistent that Mr. McCormick was the father of her 15-month-old child. Several times I have cheated, and I've been honest with him and, and told him about the, the times I've cheated, but uh, he's become crazy and, like, obsessed making up things, seeing things. There's no there's no way I've done all the things he said. He is the father of my son. After telling the court how they met, Mr. McCormick told the court that his ex-girlfriend was never faithful to him. And shockingly, Jessica seemed very comfortable with those claims. I'm a soft, and uh, you know, she cheated early in a relationship, and I it just kind of put doubt with it, you know, in my mind throughout. The bonds you have, Gavin, there's no way that could be a bond and not be father and son. The crazy shtick part, however, was yet to come, as Mr. McCormick explained his story as an evidentiary narrative titled How to Catch Your Serial Cheater. I saw her getting into a truck, I asked her who it was. She said it was another family member, which I know is like 50, 60 years old. He doesn't wear his hat sideways and blaring music like that. You believe she was cheating. I mean, what else would you be doing? Why else would she lie about it? And she was acting fishy before she took off. That's the reason I'd followed her. All right. However, Miss Bull told the court that her ex was just making up stories because of his own insecurities and that it had nothing to do with her cheating on him. The insecurities that I've created, that anything that he can't absolutely find an answer for, he, it creates doubt. The point is, once you cheat, now that opens the door where we don't believe nothing yet. Mr. McCormick even got emotional talking about baby Gavin. But Jessica ruined that moment with her cocksureness. 16 months is, you know, quite, you know, it's a long time to bond. And I got a soft heart. I guess we'll see. You're not going anywhere. You're a good father. Gavin loves you. He's your son. He's You're son. very convincing, Ms. Ball. I'm confident that it's his son. But the problem is it really isn't definitive because you admit to having sex with someone else in the month of May. I do. So now it was time for paternity results and they saved the day for baby Gavin. It has been determined by this court. Mr. McCormick, you are the father. <laughs> well, hate can make you do many despicable things including denying someone's right to fatherhood. The real reason Ms. Miller is denying your Zaylee's father is because she hates you. Yes, Your Honor. You've been there for your daughter her entire life, and you're here today to prove you are Zaylee's father. Yes, Your Honor. Though Mr. Rasmussen revealed that to the court, Ms. Miller, on the other hand, begged to differ. I do not hate him because of that. I have lost my respect for him, yes. He says this is about visitation, too. He loves his daughter, but you don't want him to have the visitation. Is that true? Yes, Your Honor. I believe that the only the only reason why he wants the visitation is to claim her on his taxes. But Judge Lauren had a hard time keeping up with the mother's claim. I'm, pay I'm paying my child support. I have my child support payment payments right here, plus an additional $3 fee, plus an additional $60 annual fee just to pay my child support. You pay $50 a week. Plus that $3 with every check, plus another $60 every year to the state. And that's not very much to get what she needs. Is, is that enough to buy her clothes so she doesn't have to wear cut-off sweatpants and the same t-shirt every time I pick her up? After this, Lauren asked Miss Miller how she was sure that Mr. Rasmussen was not the biological father. And she responded like this. She was conceived. She was conceived in March 2011. He wasn't even in the same state. He was in Vegas. And at that time in March, I wasn't even with him. I was with somebody else because he broke up with me because he cheated on me. However, the brutal part was that, though Mr. Rasmussen admitted his mistake and had been playing the father figure all along, 
Miss Miller took him for granted. I believed I was, and still believe, I was the only biological father until about five or six months or so, give or take, after she was born. We were at family court, talking to the family court commissioner. Miss Miller brings it up that I could possibly not be the father because of another man that was involved. So the judge stated the fact in Miss Miller's face. Even through the breakup, you all are making custody and visitation arrangements, but you know deep down there's another possible father. Yes, you're Why wait so long to tell him? First time that we had a court date, but the courts threw it out. Even the before passed. you tell anybody in court. What about just telling him? The trial devolved into schooling after the facts were stated and the sassy judge spoke her mind to the courtroom. Mr. Rasmussen is not the child's father, and yet you're receiving child support from Mr. Rasmussen. Have you petitioned the court Mr. Rasmussen taken off of child support? I have told him a couple times that if he would just sign her over to me that he wouldn't have to pay child support anymore. I'm not gonna do that. Just... I'm, not, I'm not gonna give up that easy. I'm fighting for what I know is mine. I know she's mine. Well, when the result hit, it was not less than a bombshell of a compassionate father. Mr. Rasmussen, you are not the father. <laughs> Miss Miller, that's a lot of nerve considering the alternative is somebody that don't want nothing to do with you or your child. I'm sorry. I'm a single mother with nobody that loves me or my child. What you cheering for? This next case is completely wacky, as it has everything to lead to paternity doubt. This ride might get bumpy, so stay patient with us. Let us begin with Miss Parker, who informed the court of this. Dude, you claim Mr. Morton fathered your seven-month-old son, Aaron, while in a relationship with his current girlfriend. Yes, Your Honor. You say the only reason he denies paternity is because his girlfriend turned him against you because she's been unable to conceive a child with him. Yes, Your Honor. You're suing for $2,047 in back child expenses. Yes, Your Honor. But Mr. Morton had his version of the story which the angry baby mama totally squashed right in the beginning like this. You have a child with Mr. Morton. Yes, I have a five-year-old son. And he's not the child in question. No. Also still continued a sexual relationship. Yes, with the both of them. You were having We've sex had with- sex, I have sex with both of them. With Mr. Morton. And Mrs. Lim. And his girlfriend. Yes, yes, girl. No. Threesome at the same time. No, threesome at the same time. Separate relationship. When Miss Parker was telling the court about their dynamic, Miss Lehman jumped in with her statement. The only reason why she was able to have sex with us is because I asked my boyfriend to have sex with her because she was lonely. My desires, me and my little freakiness, I said, can you have sex with your pregnant baby mother because she's in need? Pause, Your Honor. How would she know Pause, she's Honor. not there? Your Honor, if I want to have sex with my baby father, Your Honor, it goes down. Try it now. It goes down. Try it, it goes now. down. I don't want to try When the last it now. time I'm you good. did it? After this, Miss Parker told the judge how she was so sure that Mr. Morton was the biological father. Before that May 11th period when you were the only person with Mr. Your Honor, I lost not. The only person that I had unprotected sex with was my baby father. Was Mr. Your Morton? Your Honor, that's a lie. Your Honor, that's a lie. She clocked she, my... We <laughs> down. Yep, I'm clocking it. You Just can't like you clock, clock it, baby. And when the judge implored, the more brash mother said this. I, were you having sex with anyone? Are you serious? Your Honor, you... I listen. My I do what I do. <laughs> I'm not. I love. I love. Of me, you understand me? I don't have unprotected sex with nobody but the ones that I trust. Every time I have sex with him, it's you think of me so bad. Every so you time, trust me too, right? I, you every think time, of me so bad. You, you doubt just... me, but you had sex with me too, so I mean, yeah, you like me, right? Yeah. So the reality TV judge somewhat concluded the story for her audience. At the point you realize you're pregnant, I you tell Mr. Morton. Yes, that's you what you tell I'm to do. I told him I was pregnant, and I did. I'm not gonna lie. I told him this is not your baby. Being as though I have a sonogram telling me I'm 13 weeks. So when I go to my first pre to appointment and they give me a fetal assessment and they say, no, miss, you're eight weeks pregnant. Your baby is due December the 24th. However, before the DNA finale, both women on the podium took another run at each other which was actually cut short by the judge as follows. I mean, well, what's, what, what's the point of you He's knocking good. what we have? He's much? I mean, Ebony. I'm knocking Your it Honor. because but of the fact Honor, that I this never, is the reason Honor, why my son I never, is first of all, I'm, I, 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 this is out of character for me. I have never, ever in a huh. million years came at this woman like this. It's one thing when you sitting there stating facts, but it's another thing when you trying to degrade me. The reason that I feel the way I feel about her is because we formed a relationship. But now, it was time for the results. Our Aaron's father. Thank you. I told you. Like, I'm not no. Come on. 
on. I'll support the mom on when I get up. <laughs> Ms. Parker, you came to court with a suit in the amount of $2,047. Mr. Morton is, in fact, baby Aaron's biological father, which means you are legally obligated to care for that child. Ms. Foster is in court today, attempting to establish that the man she met on the internet is the biological father of her child. You and your ex-boyfriend planned your pregnancy only to have him abandon you and deny paternity. You are here to prove that he is your daughter, Jakiah's biological father. You want him to step up and take care of his daughter, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, while she was reassuring us that they planned a baby together, she said something that made us pause for a moment. In the midst of us staying together, he told me I was gonna be his baby's mother because I'm the best mother in the world. But the best mother's boyfriend believed otherwise. I dropped her off at my house, claiming it was her brother. It was the dude she was sleeping with. She already came to my house pregnant by her so-called brother. It was like, I mentioned it to her, you feel me? She saw that she used me for a place to I can't stay. come nowhere pregnant all the, all if I just had a baby and it's January and I wasn't pregnant. He had a whole nother girl. He wanted to play house yeah. here and there and have us in a polygamous relationship. Even though the to and fro between the participants was a little jiggy, Judge Lauren preferred to jump into the pregnancy question. Take me to the day you found out you were pregnant. I fell to the floor. I did three rolls around the floor in the doctor's office because I wasn't having no kids if I'm finna be a single mother to two children by myself. I'm 20. I told Marquise because Marquise was there. Physically, he was gone out of sight. Wasn't worried about him. And if that made you uncomfortable, Pay attention to what she says next. This is the brother yeah. who wasn't a brother. The yeah. brother who wasn't a brother. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. So I told him, I'm pregnant. You could be the father. It's out of you and Sean. Off back, I told them. Slept with y'all around the same time in the same week. She not However, Judge Lauren was bumped about the fact that if there were two men in the equation, then why did she only bring Mr. Jackson to court? I got pregnant February 21st. That's the same day you left. So that week and that week before, I had a menstrual period. We're sleeping together the entire time. While I'm on, in the shower, every night, every day, three times a day, lunch, <laughs> breakfast, and dinner, and I was the third. Two weeks, third. why are you talking? We two weeks together for two, two weeks, bro. Seven days to get pregnant, baby. So after this, the disorderly baby pushed the wrong buttons to judge like this. By me going to medical school, I kind of know what I'm talking about as far as the female productive system. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, okay. Yes, I wish you would have known so much about what you was talking about that you would have known who your child's father was. I mean, I okay. Was, but so, I but mean, go ahead. But go ahead, honey. Is, go mean, ahead. School us. School girlfriend. School us. After that, the judge turned to Mr. Jackson and asked him about his relationship with his alleged biological daughter. I'm like four hours away. I asked her, you feel me? I can go and get Jakaya. Oh no, you're not bringing her up there, woo woo. My girl ain't got nothing to do with that. My daughter, you feel me? Then why can't I be around her? So you're Who saying, even said I have to come back is, to Chicago tried, with Your point is, i but she doesn't want... They so you have bathroom. never seen this baby in person? No. In your life? No. Wow. This, however, occurred when the results were read. Jackson, you are not the father. <laughs> <sighs> What's funny? I heard that, it was kind of like, ooh, ooh, that's why I left. You just performing now? You want your baby to be a stage show? That's on you. Sometimes you just gotta say like, you know what, ain't no shame in my game no more. I did what I did what I did. I do need to think about who my child's father really is. This woman here has actually blamed her own mother for trying to steal her husband. Miss Scott. You say your mother was an addict when you were younger and now tries to act holier than thou. Yes. You believe that your mother is jealous of you and wants your husband. Yes. You say Miss Scott McCray never told you to pay her back. No. Miss Scott, you petitioned the court for a lie detector test to know once and for all if your mother wants your man. Yes. When the judge asked Miss Scott McCray why she was trying to wreck her own daughter's home, she said this. Miss Scott McCray, why are you so intent on breaking up your daughter and her husband? Your Honor, I don't want to break up my daughter and her husband, but my daughter needs a wake-up call. She has goals and she had aspirations when she was younger that I've seen her just lose total sight of. He's a deadbeat. He's not a good provider. He hinders his family more so, I think, than he can help it. So the judge tried to rub the deadbeat husband part in. Grandma made her point like this. If I have five children depending on me and they need things in the morning to sustain them while they're at daycare, this man, Toy, to I, I, okay. I was sleeping in their den. He went into the kitchen three or four times and the whole night he was eating cereal. And that's his last job that he had, Celeste was working two jobs. The reason he quit his job is so he could go home and babysit the kids. But after this bounce check, Ginny came out of the bottle and made the whole narrative more complicated. Tell me the 
story, you said your mom wrote you a bounce check. Yes. Calling my mom, she ain't answering the phone. I didn't have to pay your bills, Celeste. So, I but you didn't agreed have to. to I and paid your grandchildren what I, paid were what I agreed to pay. And when I took the other portion and moved into my place. So, Miss Scott McRae actually duped her daughter like this. We needed to give him $1,200. I went to my mother and told her, we got half in cash. Can you meet me the other half of the way so we all still have a place to live? She told me yes. She told me, I'll take y'all cash and give you a check for the full amount. My landlord called me and said, well, this check, I'm at the bank and it's not going through. It's not clearing. Mm -hmm. I'm calling my mom. She ain't answering the phone. Miss Scott even told the court that she suspected her mother had a thing for her husband. When she comes to my home, the only name you hear out of her mouth is Toy. Toy, can you help me? do this. Toy, can you grab this? Toy, can Why? you fix me this? Toy, will you fix this? By now, the judge was done with mother-daughter screaming, so she decided to question the husband. And I want to know what you have to add to this. She always touching me on my chest. She even came out the blue one day to even come and get me by myself to come and pick up a tent for her. And then it was time for the truth to come out. Have you ever made any sexual advances to your son-in-law toy? You said no. And the lie detector determined the truth. Yes, it was. You were asked if you want a sexual relationship Ooh. with your son-in-law toy. You said no, and the lie detector determined the truth. 